Lemonex, we're in Keyport, New Jersey, by the shore points. Always uh, getting some eastern gray squirrels here. Most of the houses that have gray squirrels have a tree line. Or not much of a tree line, but a lot of trees uh, next to the house. So I already did a survey. I had an $89. Well, the, actually, this was a $175 survey because they wanted to do a full report on the... Uh, interior and then an exterior so I had to do the roof inspection as well got a line took pictures made a report so that was 179 five and uh, but we can do just an attic inspection for 89 just to determine you know if you have an actual situation and then we credit that towards a job so I mean uh, you can get you can get a full attic inspection and an exterior without a ladder survey for eight, as low as $89 and that will give you a full assessment of what's going on um, get somebody up in that attic you know have to wear full gear covering and uh, breathing protection because you don't and and you know we're insured so you know you don't have to go do all that it's a lot, a lot of work to do a service call like that I uh, have experience really and just know how to take precautions but uh, so we determined it was squirrels, and I was thinking they're getting on onto the house from from this uh, hip roof here, and then crawling right up and going to that spot right there, about where the two gutters meet, the two sockets meet, overlap. There's a gap just like this house has one, it has something like that. But there's birds in that situation. But when there's birds, when you have a bird nest situation, usually that will attract squirrels <laughs> as well. So. Let me check everything else out to see. But I was I was already in that attic space, so I, I knew they had a squirrel infestation for a few years. It's worth a lot, a lot of activity up there. And I figured, well, how are they getting on the house? So I figured they were just getting on that fence. When that door closes, it, it connects, and they just jump right up on there. I didn't see it, but I just get I can just see how they can get on and get off easily up into that corner. So then he confirmed, yes, he does see squirrels running along this fence on the top so I'm gonna put a couple traps up uh, up there by the gutter on both sides because I told them I'll, I'll go after the targeted since I can do that I'm gonna put two ladders up there when I did my survey I went on the side so we're gonna be using the uh, regular case traps on the ground and they're gonna have sensors the trap spark sensors you know we always test them out every time we put it on there we put the transmitter in a central location so it can uh, communicate with a GPS with a satellite signal just like a cell phone it's exactly what it is it's actually a cell phone signal it has its own phone number and so these transmitters they ping to the main transmitter their sensors they ping to the main transmitter up to 100 yards and uh, and it's a me mechanism so when the trap door shuts it pulls a trigger and then I know this house had a, uh, a capture. So we don't leave, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about checking the traps twice a day. Uh, and so we know right away, if we caught something at this house, so I know to come right away, get priority. And uh, so far, so good. Majority of the time, the, the scrolls are definitely viable. They're, they're alive, they're not compromised. And then I can give them a safe uh, relocation. Just give them some water if it's a hot day. Uh, that's why I like catching them on the ground. They have a longer, easier uh, success rate than if you trap them on the roof. But we're going to do a temporary trapping up there with the shelter covers we have on our other, other YouTube videos. Uh, how we how we put the traps in uh, enclosures. This is the, the shield them from sun and rain when we put them on the roof. I might catch other, I could catch skunk and I could catch groundhogs with these traps. I could even catch cats. And we have to follow the same guidelines. I do take them away and relocate them at the end of town. Even though they're not the target animal, but they mess with the traps. So uh, that's, that's, that's the chances you take when you put the ground traps down. But I don't have to worry about it. I know I, cut, I did a capture, so we'll bring the right truck that we know we're, we're, we're doing our 
uh, relocation of an animal, so we bring the right kind of vehicle because we don't we don't bring our van for that. Here's another sensor we've just anchored in the ground. You can also put the trap. On, uh, we have some videos on the main website that you can actually install the trap. I mean the sensor right on the trap, but I, I believe that messes with the mechanism. And there, we, we've experienced some uh, fa faulty uh, setups with that. So I've been anchoring them into the ground where you could tie them to a fence or anything, even a brick, big a piece of stone put on the ground. It's a rocky or clay soil. It'll anchor the sensor so it'll pull the trigger when it closes. And that's it. We know we caught one. We don't know exactly what we caught, but we know the trap door closed. And that saves money because we don't have to come keep looking. We can put more traps out and not worry about uh, forgetting one. You know, we don't have to worry. Oh, did did we check the, check the whole yard? And you know, maybe I'll send a guy out, and there's he's not aware of all the trap placements. You know, that's 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 the problem you have with wildlife. You send another guy out who didn't do the placements, and he didn't, doesn't check all the traps. And uh, you know, one could be can end up dying because you didn't check it. You can't rely on the customer. You don't want the customer really to see what, find it, uh, be looking at them because if it dies in there, then it's kind of, you're still responsible. I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to go on the roof and finish up. I just wanted to document that. This property, I like the documents. We're getting into the, we're starting to get into that wildlife right now already. It's September. Change of weather, that, even though it's warm. They're still looking for that shelter to have that, uh, do that nesting fall, do that fall nesting activity, fall and spring, and that extends, that extends into winter. So it's basically going to be seven, seven, eight months of activity, a lot of calls. So we're gearing up towards that, and I'm going to get some more of these systems because you can only use one system per house. Here it is. Here's the uh, main transmitter. It's really good. Great, great piece of technology. Most of it is a, 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 a battery pack. You get it charged up, and it'll last probably a week, two weeks. After you unplug it, it'll still work for two weeks. And it keeps giving out a main signal every 24 hours after you set it. Every 24 hours, it'll it'll give us a uh, it'll transmit us a test to make sure everything's working. It's pretty great. It's great technology. It's amazing. Uh, and we don't need to put any adjustments. I thought about putting traps on this side, but this is what's great. If we don't catch anything, which we will, I always catch catch squirrels. Uh, we can always make adjustments, put additional traps around the property. Or usually, this happens when you have groundhogs and skunks, dead animals. If they're not nesting on your property, coming from a neighboring property, and they're not going into the traps, you set out more traps. That's the only way, really. That's the only way to really trick them is to put more traps and keep making adjustments. Because some of these animals are work at nighttime, so you have to really put them close to their runways. Well, I'm going to close this up and uh, get finished. This is a Sunday. Eh, I work. Work. It's great. The reason why I work weekends. Is, well, no, is yeah Sunday. <laughs> the reason why I work weekends is because I could get a lot more done on the weekends than their weekdays with the traffic and the rush hour and everything. And it gives us more more of a more more time for our clients during the week when there's a rush and also we can get a few a couple more calls a day because we did our did our weekend work and you give them customer being on call seven days a week is just great it's just awesome don't have to worry about these don't have to worry about disengaging our animal traps when we have somebody on call we don't have to, worry, we don't have to disengage these traps because if we're not in town we can't rescue them right so that's what's, what's really good about having the our trap smart uh, motion sensor. Uh, not it's not motion sensors. We do have a motion sensor pro program, but that's for something else. That's just to check activity. It's very temporary. It's part of our diagnostics. This is one. Uh, you know, some companies will go as far as putting a camera, but I mean that's just too much. They charge. They charge for that, and. Uh, that's why, that's why we just do what we specialize in, structure infesting wildlife, and it's pretty standard. Just confirm it and go for it.
and that, that saves you on that diagnostic money. We do it as low as eighty nine dollars, and we and we put that towards your towards the job. I mean, it's a good deal. And then you have a template. So if you were shopping around, you, you know exactly, you know, if you had a company come up behind us, you know if they're lying. Because <laughs> we already gave you our report. Okay, I'm going to close up this video. And there will be many more to come. So keep tuned. Stay tuned for Eliminix. Really blow up this wildlife uh, part of the business. Really blow it up. Had about three years, three years doing it this way. It's the exact same way. It's getting better and better and better. It's getting really, and it's easier to train guys now. And the laws are getting stricter, but we're already ahead of that. We're already ahead of, uh, we already anticipate that. And the public, we're already on top of uh, the public's perception of how we handle the animals and, and just doing this documenting, doing documenting the, uh, the process educating the clients exactly what we're doing, how we're handling it, and that we are aware of the strict and ever-growing stringent guidelines. And, of course, it's the right thing to do, but when you're doing it, when you can look at fines and stuff like that, I mean, it really deters a company to, to help the public when there's violations attached to, 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 to the possibilities of mistakes. Mistakes happen, but even when mistakes happen, we still, we still are, um, even though no one gets hurt, just the animal. We still uh, get treated like you know, like something major. So if they say you don't like it, get out of the business. We're gonna stay in the business. We kind of like we kind of like that we're ahead of it because the competitors are are getting uh, are too afraid to take these jobs now. Because they they they, they <laughs> now now they're the people are trying to get into the game. The regulations are all spread out. And there's just really no way they could test it. We did a lot of trial and error, and uh, so we know. So if you try to get, get into this wildlife business late in the game, with all all these all these restrictions and guidelines and everything, it's like it's better not to take not to take it on. It's just it's too much to be involved. And uh, I can recommend like two or three companies that I know for sure. I'm not going to rip you off. Going to do a good job, and they're my competitors. But I mean. I'll recommend them if I feel uh, we have too much on our plate and you need something done quickly. We'll refer out so you can trust our referrals. If we refer a competitor, that's all we would refer. Refer is a, a competitor, an actual known competitor that we would know uh, can do the same or you know work and even respond quicker because they're larger companies. Derek with the Lemonex, located uh, in Sarahville, New Jersey. We like to do. With wildlife, we like to do mostly Middlesex County, the majority of Middlesex County. And uh, we do have some specials. But uh, just give us a call. We'll take it case by case. Have a good day.